Hello from my living room. How is everyone doing? I trust you uh, had a good afternoon. It was interesting around here after lunch. We uh, had a tornado warning. And so we uh, hustled down to our basement, you know, to be safe. No, we didn't see any tornadoes. And uh, I fell asleep down there and I woke up and everybody was gone. So uh didn't last that long, uh, the warning as such. But uh, lots of uh, banging and thunder and stuff. So at any rate, interesting afternoon. And I was able to sleep through it. I mean, it was great. And uh, I hope you had a good afternoon as well. And uh, enjoying this wonderful, I mean, except for today now, it was a bit unusual, but uh, it's been a very nice summer. Um, lots of heat and uh, lots of sunshine. And we definitely do need the rain for the farmers and things, for the crops. But uh, it's been very, very nice. I have enjoyed it every day. And uh, love sitting on my front patio uh, with my uh, iced coffee in the evening and then just enjoying uh, the day. It's definitely one of my favorites. So thank the Lord for his goodness. Uh, he gives us things that we don't really deserve, but I do appreciate it. All right, so tonight I do have a, a little quiz. All true and false. So it's T or F. Okay, true, false. So just, a, I, guess, I guess I got about three, I think. Three I got here. So are we ready? I see a few more people jumping on. We're going to be in Daniel chapter 9 in just a few moments. Wait for a couple more seconds. Daniel chapter 9. Tonight. And all right, let's do the quiz. True or false? Did Daniel sit in the gate of King Nebuchadnezzar? True or false? Did Daniel sit in the gate of the King Nebuchadnezzar? True or false? Did Daniel sit in the gate of King Nebuchadnezzar? True or false? So it's 50-50. So you might, you might be guessing. Any guesses out there? Anybody? True or false? Mr. Smith put something in there. He put an answer. Anybody else? Are we? Are we okay? I got another one there. Yeah. Anybody else? True or false? Daniel sat in the gate of King Nebuchadnezzar. The answer is true. It is true. You can find that in Daniel 2, 49. All right. Um, was Darius the senior commander king when he took the, king, uh, took the city of Babylon? Was Darius the senior commander, king, co-reigner, uh, when he took the city of Babylon? True or false? I get one answer there. Anybody else want to add? Make a stab at it. Make a guess. Get a couple there now. Anybody else? Jump in there. Yeah. 
So in Daniel chapter 5, in verse 31, And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. So he was co-reigning uh, and the senior commander uh, with the situation there. So he, it is a true. It is true. All right, so the last one. True or false? The Antichrist will be broken without hand. True or false? The Antichrist will be broken without hand. True or false? Is that a biblical statement or is that a false statement? True or false? Good to see so many folks jumping on. That's great. Fantastic. Hello, hello to each and every one of you. The Antichrist will be broken without hand. True or false? I saw a couple answers already. Wait to see if there's anybody else. And the answer is true. That's in um, Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. He will be broken without hand. Um, so that's, that's the three questions we got. So we'll go to Daniel chapter 9. So as we close out um, the last four chapters, that's what we're going to look at now is the last four chapters of the book of Daniel. We... Uh, the first two-thirds of the book of Daniel was courage. We saw in Daniel. Uh, we saw his three friends stand for truth in, in chapter 1. Then we saw the three lads wouldn't bow to King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, fiery furnace, lion's den, then God dealing with Nebuchadnezzar, God dealing with Belshazzar, and Daniel involved with that. So it was a lot more uh, character studies, if you want to say. There was a lot we learned from the characters that were represented, and God's truth, obviously. The last chapters we'll look at now of Daniel are detailed in prophecy. Now, we did look at some of that with Antichrist already, but they go even further. They really, you dive into it in a big way. And we really need to understand Daniel, uh, the book of Daniel, because it helps us then understand Revelation. And uh, there's some things that uh, Daniel talks about, and we've already read it, that's already taking place, but at the time he's talked about it, it was still in the future. It was still yet to happen. Uh, so we need to know what Daniel says, uh, what was recorded for us in the book of Daniel, and then that helps us understand the book of Revelation so much better. They're interconnected. So we will not get through the whole book of Daniel chapter 9 tonight, like, or that chapter 9. It's just too much information. Uh, so it is fundamental, though, the Daniel 70 weeks, and that's recorded for us in Daniel chapter 9. We're not going to get too far into that, uh, this evening, it's going to be more next time when we look at it, but this is the introductional for the part of the Daniel chapter 9. Uh, it is a foundational piece. I mean, this is so foundational, the 70 weeks of Daniel. It's very, very important. And it's important to understand as well that this chapter deals with two periods of time that are related to the Jews. So previous or, po or before the tribulation and things, and then after the uh, rapture and the tribulation and things as well. So it's going to relate to two time periods for the book of, or for, sorry, for the Jewish people. So let's look at uh, Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Azuiris, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek my prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that kept his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing 
from the precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we heard or hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in the name to our God, our, our king, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. All right, so uh, you might hear my cat yow, uh, meowing in the background. It's, uh, I don't know, I guess she wants something, but I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm glued to you guys right now, so just so you know. So if you hear her, she's fine. There's no problems, okay? <laughs> All right, so uh, 70 years of captivity. The prophecy here that's talked about, Daniel was in the Word of God uh, in verse number 2, Daniel. Uh, Verses 1 and 2, he talks about what time frame he was in. And then Daniel was talking about the destiny for his people. And he's about 90 years old now, so he's not a spring chicken anymore. He was reading Jeremiah 25. He talks about, he, he says, you know, what he was reading. But we know exactly what he was reading because he talks about he knows it was 70 years. And that's found for us in Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 1 to 14. The Lord caused him to see that the people, the Jewish people, would be in Babylon for that 70 years, and then there would be there'd be opportunity to be released from the captivity. So I, there's going to be a few times through this, this um, lesson tonight that I'm going to point out some things that we need to watch out today in our time. And one of these things is the visions and dreams that people talk about that they have. All right. Um, God gave us his word. So the word of God, I hope that you have it with you. If not, you can get it pretty easy. You can have it on your phone. The word of God is everything that we need. We do not need visions or dreams. Okay. Those times have passed. Uh, he's given us all the words that we need for our instruction in righteousness. We don't need visions and dreams anymore. Uh, his spirit, the, as I spoke about this morning, the Holy Spirit, how it helps us to live the Christian life as we need to. The Holy Spirit instructs us, helps us uh, to understand what the Word of God says. I can't tell you loud enough or long enough to beware of those who say they have a new revelation or they have a new thing or they supposedly had a new dream or they had a vision and they call them Bible themselves Bible teachers. I mean, if they're going to be honest, they shouldn't call themselves Bible teachers. They should be calling themselves vision teachers, okay? The Bible is complete. And I have seen so many wackos about this, especially with the events of COVID and things. Um, I, I It blows my mind how many people have had visions in the last four months. It is bonkers. And I'll be honest, whenever someone gets on like that, I click the TV or I remove them, swipe left, right, whatever you got to do to get rid of them on your Facebook feed. I'm done. That, that, that's not true. No, the word of God is full, it's completed, and it's for us today. We don't need any more of those things. So Daniel was uh, realizing the 70 years of captivity were about to close. Babylon had seized uh, Jerusalem, Judah. Uh, under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar in 606 BC. Daniel understood the prophecies in the years 50, 539, 538 BC. They would be able to go back, or sorry, that's when he understood. So that was two more years, and that they would be released. I mean, imagine how exciting Daniel must have been in his Bible study time to figure that out. I mean, that was massive. It'd be so encouraging. So just as a side note for us, you know, there's going to be times when we get in God's Word, we're reading it, we're, uh, you know, I don't know how many times you've read through God's Word, uh, probably lots of times, I have read through lots of times, and you'll come across a portion of Scripture like, oh, that's a good one today, whatever it is. Oh, man, that that's a great psalm, or that that's a great uh, biblical truth in Proverbs, or, wow, I didn't realize that happened to Paul and Acts, or whatever the case, they just kind of, boop, and there they are. They've been there the whole time, but you just didn't see it before, or see it in that context before. You, you've you read it before, but it just didn't pop out like that. And that's the excitement about God's Word, that we can get in it. It's not dead. This book is alive, and uh, we should get in it and see what it says, and get in there, and it only encourages us, it helps us have better focus on the Lord, thus people around us. It's just a great 
uh, multiplying effect of goodness for us if we get in God's word. So I read for you down uh, so far, and, and I can't know where I stopped. No, I think we'll make verse 6. Uh, from verse 3 to verse 19, Daniel uh, is, is praying to the Lord. So I'll pick up verse number 7. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel that are near and that are far away, through all the countries where thou hast driven them, because of this their trespasses, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth uh, confusion of faces, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we've rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all of Israel have transgressed thy law, again, uh, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because he have sinned against him. And he have confirmed his words, and spake against us, and against our judges, and judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil, for under the whole heaven hath not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Uh, the idea here, he, uh, Daniel is coming, he reads the word of God, and then he prays. And that's a great thing. We need to be in prayer. Uh, as individual believers today, we need to be in prayer. In Acts chapter 6, verse 4, it says, But we will give ourselves continually pray, prayer and to the ministry of the word. You know, Daniel found out a really great piece of information as he was in God's word that day. But he didn't go out boasting about his insights into the word. He didn't even go preach a sermon. He went right to his knees in prayer. Now, that is a wonderful biblical attitude indicating a heart that I want to serve God. I want to get the most out of what God says. Now, it's sad to see these individuals who have prophetic truth and they, they're boasters. Instead of being prayer warriors or humble servants of God, they are just so proudful and, and, and again, like the boaster idea. The biblical, biblical result of us taking and applying the word and understanding that nugget of truth that we've received is never pride. It's always humbleness. 1 Peter 5, 5 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with pride. Nope. Be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and he giveth grace to the humble. That's what God desires for us, is to be humble. That's, it. That's what he wants. Imagine how strange it must have been for the people in uh, that area to see Daniel because he was in sackcloth uh, uh, and you know mourning and, and things. That's not mourning, but just giving himself that low degree. The Jewish people would have noticed right away. There's something up with Daniel. Daniel's found something out. What is going on with Daniel? Uh, and, and Daniel's prayer is one of the greatest examples of intercession in the Bible. He confesses his own sin in this portion of Scripture. He confesses uh, the sins of his people. He reviews the Bible history that we know about and confesses that the nation has been wrong. It has been wicked. It has not been righteous in its judgments. He knew uh, the warnings that Moses had given them. And he says, hey, we, we, are, we should be sorry. Lord, forgive us. God, forgive us for what we have done. And it's interesting to see that Daniel, though a very righteous man, I understand he was not sinless, but a very righteous man, identifies himself with the sinning nation. And he makes himself as guilty as those individuals. He doesn't go around and say, well, I'm not guilty. Of I, I didn't do that. He, he says, no, I need to make sure everything is good with God. He doesn't, he doesn't want any obstacles to impede God's blessing again upon the nation of Israel. And he confesses all the sins of the people. And he prays for Jerusalem. And uh, I don't have any doubt that Daniel had prayed for Jerusalem many times before. This wasn't the first time. I think that's one reason why God blessed them, because Psalms 122 says, verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. 
peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces for my brother and companion's sake. I will now say, peace be within thee, because the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. The idea is that God blesses those who bless Israel and pray for Israel and for Jerusalem. I'm going to be honest, I pray for Israel, I can't say every day, but most days. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, absolutely. They're, the Jewish people are God's people. And I needed to be doing my part to reach out to them, encourage them to know the true living God, the Messiah. But I'm for them. They need to know that. And that we need to be a witness of it. The, the question here is, why pray to, for the prosperity of a city that's laid waste? I mean, it, there was nothing left. Because God promised at the end of the captivity, the Jews would go back. And that they would go back and they would rebuild the temple. Pretty amazing. Jeremiah 29 uh, 29 10 says for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon I will visit you and perform my good work toward you in causing you to return to this place and just for a little thought here Daniel talks about last time we looked in with the Antichrist and the desolation of abominations and, and things of that nature and and the um, the wickedness that would take place in the temple the temple was destroyed so Daniel was looking forward to the new temple, that, and that one now has been destroyed as well back in 70 AD, but he was looking forward that, oh, there's going to be another temple. The Lord's going to allow us to go back. There will be another temple. Uh, verse 29, And then shall ye uh, call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I'll bring you again to the place whence I have caused you to be carried away captive. That's amazing. And that happened in that time with Daniel, just a little bit after, two years. But even now we see the Jewish people, there for the first time, I think it was about three years ago, for the first time there is more in modern day history, there's more Jewish people in Israel than there is outside of Israel. All right? the, the Jewish people are returning to Israel. And again, it's all come together for God's plan. And uh, I love history. I, I mean, I think you already know that. Uh, I, I enjoy it. I have all kinds of books in my library, physical library, digital library, uh, about history, modern day events, things of that nature. And I like to go online and, and research as well, get information. And I've discovered in, I mean, I haven't looked at every uh, cultural people group, but in the hist historical research that I've done about people being conquered or conquering people, and then they take that conquered people and bring them back to their homeland, it is a very rare event that they are allowed to return back. Now, the reality is, and especially after 70 years, I mean, that's a long time, 70 years. The whole idea of bringing that people group into that the host's property or proper domain is integration. That's the idea. Let's integrate them into our society. Eventually, you know, we'll overwhelm them with our customs, with our culture, and we don't need to worry about that people group ever being a problem for us because over time they'll just evaporate all right and we could have easily seen the jewish people uh overwhelmed now god took care of them and it's an interesting thought here if that integration had taken place if the integration like i just described and lots of other people groups have done taken that foreign body brought them within their own boundaries and integrated them into their society, and there is no now visible group, that would have changed our world. Just think about this. It would have changed our world. It would have meant there was no seed of David. If the Jewish people would have integrated into the Babylonian Empire, then the Medes and the Persians, and so forth, there would have been no seed of David. There would there'd be no line then for the Messiah. The Lord miraculously protected them. And even... After Daniel, Esther is another time when there was a great time of trouble against the Jewish people. The reality is 
God was watching out. It's amazing to see as you read through scripture how God just put his hand on the children of Israel and protected them. That's not to say all of them are protected. There was loss, there was death, but God said, I'm going to keep the remnant. They, these are my people. And the old devil, the old Satan, he's not going to get them. You know, and, and uh, Isaiah 44, verse 26 says, That confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. And saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built, and I will raise you up the decayed places thereof. You know, and it two years later, Cyrus would again uh, very unusual to say, Hey, you can go back to Jerusalem, rebuild those walls, and rebuild that temple. Really, it was a temple first, then the walls. And, and I mean, it was unheard of. And he gave of the kingdom's treasury to help them go back and rebuild that uh, temple and other things as well. But that's what he did. So Daniel was laying hold of these great truths, of these great promises. And he then was turning to God in prayer and confession. Lord, help us. And we will see how God responds to him and tells him about the 70 weeks, the things that are yet to come. Uh, and it's intriguing. And um, we again, we're not going to be able to dive into that tonight, but I just want you to understand it is so pivotal. It is so important. The It's building blocks for uh, our eschatology, end times uh, teaching is the 70 weeks. Uh, it's so important. If we get that mixed up, it causes all, it's a big ripple effect throughout everything else. And it's so important to get right on the money. I'm hoping uh, to be able to get uh, a bit of a handout next week. I don't know, I'll get, maybe get Pastor Matt to give me a hand or something. Maybe I'll send it out via email in Sunday afternoon. A chart that you all can have so you can see what this 70 weeks is. And, and I'll, I'll, make, I'll try my best to make sure you have that for next Sunday. But it's so important and it then is a great visual tool for you Hey, this is what Pastor's saying, and then you might be asked questions about it. Uh, it's a great tool for you to have uh, to understand what is before us. So just a couple practical applications before we close off tonight. The first one is, Daniel in his 90s was a faithful student of the Word of God. What a great example that is to us. And... It, each of us should have that same desire to be a student of the Word of God. And <clears throat> I know I, I've dealt with some seniors and sometimes like, oh, I don't know what to do, Pastor. I can't do what I used to. You can still be a great student of the Word of God. And we need them. We absolutely need them today. Uh, so nobody gets a uh, easy ticket here in the sense, oh, you don't need to do anything. No, all of us can be students of the Word of God from the youngest to the oldest. Hey, we need college and career individuals in our church and in Christian circles to know the truth and stand for it. We are bombarded by all kinds of half-truths and deceptions, and then some of them are out-and-out -out lies from so many sources. Just get in God's Word and know what the truth is. What's the truth? And, and then couple that uh, understanding, being in the Scriptures with prayer, Man, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be so encouraging and so helpful for you in your personal life and your relationships and your family. Again, your problems don't evaporate, but it, you're being equipped to deal with them. All right. And uh, it's, it's an, a vital activity for all Christians to be involved with. And then number two, God has a plan for Israel. Okay. There is a lot of voices out there saying Israel's done. It's the church. That's, Listen, right now, it's the church age. It's absolutely true. But when the rapture takes place, the focus is upon Israel. God is looking to take care of the Jews, and he's going to deal with wicked men. There's no doubt, okay? And he has an amazing plan for them, and the Lord has not released his hand from the Jewish people in the sense that he's done with them. Uh, he, he's, he's not going to put them aside. No, nope, he's got a plan, and he's going to use it for his honor and glory. And again, we're going to see more of that next week, uh, next time. Well, I shouldn't say next week. If the weather's bad next week, that's right. We're, we're supposed to be meeting at church uh, for singing. So that's right. We won't be here next week. It'll be the week after unless it's bad weather. Um, so at any rate, 
it's just God has plan, and, and he has a plan for the church, he has a plan for your life specifically, and he has a plan for the Jewish people. All right, so just some reminders. Um, podcast Tuesday and Thursday this week, and then Wednesday, uh, Pastor Matt's finishing up a, a series on the armor of God, and then uh, Facebook devotion on Saturday morning. And then, like I said, next Sunday night, weather permitting, uh, so around 3 o'clock, if there's any kind of bad weather forecasted or whatever, we'll just do this online and we'll look to do it the next week um, and to go for the singing things. Uh, so, again, meet in the back, parking lot, um, and bring your chair. If you want to sit in your car, you can too, but it's probably going to be pretty hot and I can't have all the cars running uh, type of thing. So, uh, just so you know... Uh, bring that shade with you, and we'll have it on live Facebook. I don't know how well that's going to work, but we'll have that there so you can hear people sing and see people, and so we'll look forward to that. All right, folks, have yourselves a great uh, Sunday night. Thank you for all joining in. This is a really good crowd uh, via our Facebook uh, method. Uh, 28, I see right now, who are watching, so that's great. Praise the Lord for that. And, uh, you know, encourage someone else to check us out online as well on Sunday nights or our Bible study. And tell your friends, uh, encourage family members, other Christians, too, with our podcast. Uh, what's, what, you know, that there's an option there that they can listen to something good and be an encouragement to them. All right. Have a great evening. Uh, keep looking at Jesus. Keep exploring the Word.